Sy here. You've probably heard about Charles Darwin before. He's famous for coming up with evolution by natural selection. But what does natural selection mean? And before we talk about natural selection, I want to talk about artificial selection, also called selective breeding. Humans have been doing selective breeding for thousands of years. It's simply choosing what traits to breed for. All the different breeds of dogs, from Dachshunds to Great Danes, were created by choosing which dogs to breed together to encourage certain desirable traits. We've also done this with plants. One of the best examples is the common banana. The wild banana isn't sweet, and it's full of seeds. Over time, farmers chose to cultivate seeds from the sweeter bananas. By doing this over centuries, they've created the four current cultivars, breeds of bananas. The variety you eat is the Cavendish banana. Selective breeding works because of variation. Variation just means that there are differences between individuals in a species, be they dogs, bananas, or any other species. By the way, this also means that all the food you eat is genetically modified. Farmers have been choosing which traits to breed for, which alters the genetics. It's not done in a lab, and it takes a while. But the flour in your bread came from selectively bred wheat that has desirable traits. In short, genetically modified. Going back to nature now, there's always a lack of resources. There's not enough food, or water, or space, or sunlight for every individual. Populations grow until they are limited by scarcity in some resource. Once there aren't enough resources, there's competition for these resources. It's important to note that this competition can be from one's own species or from another species. The competition leads to some variation being favored over other variations. It might be fur color or patterning. It might be better hearing. It might be being stronger. It might be the behavior. Stay still. Individuals with a variation that helps them survive or reproduce are more likely to be healthier, live longer, and have more offspring. As long as the variation in question is genetic, this means that the offspring have good odds of inheriting the beneficial variation as well. Over time, these helpful variations become more common in the population. These helpful variations are called adaptations. And that's natural selection. Helpful variations, adaptations, are selected for. They become more common as they get inherited more often. The bad variations are selected against. They become less common over time. Did you know that plants compete for sunlight? Think of giant trees like the giant sequoia or giant redwood. The tallest is about 95 meters, or around 311 feet tall. That's a huge tree. Think of how much energy goes into growing that tall. Why spend so much energy into growing tall? Because being taller than the trees around you means you get more sunlight, which means you have more energy 
to grow with than they do. Being just a little bit taller than the trees nearby is enough of an adaptation to make taller trees more common, at least for the redwood. Charles Darwin saw the result of natural selection at the Galapagos Islands in the mid-1800s. Darwin collected birds from different islands. They were all finches, but they were all different species of finch. Now, each species of finch from the Galapagos was adapted to the island it lived on. Remember, an adaptation is a trait that helps an organism survive or reproduce. The main difference between the different finches were the beaks. And the type of beak a bird had depended on the type of food it ate. Some islands had insects that lived in cracks. A narrow beak helps the bird get food. Some islands had nuts with hard shells. A narrow beak couldn't break the shell, but a large strong beak could. Other islands had flowers with nectar, so a long and narrow beak helped get the sweet liquid. Darwin hypothesized that one species of finch was blown out to the Galapagos during a storm. This group of birds spread out among the different islands. But since each island has a different kind of food available, this made different beak shapes be helpful on different islands. That's the competition for resources. So one island, a large beak would be an adaptation, but the same beak shape would be a hindrance on a different island. Consider two islands. They have different kinds of food available for the birds. One has seeds, another has burrowing insects. Seeds are hard, and birds with larger, stronger beaks have an easier time getting to the food inside the shell. You can expect that birds with smaller, narrow beaks would have trouble finding enough food. Their populations would shrink. But birds with large, strong beaks would get enough food to survive and have offspring. Their populations would increase. Now let's turn to the other island. The one with burrowing insects for food. Yum! Birds with smaller, narrow beaks would be able to get at the insects and eat well. Their populations would increase. But the large, strong beaks would be clumsier here. These birds would have trouble getting enough food. Their populations would shrink. So, Two different islands with two different foods available. On one island, having a large beak is an adaptation. On the other, having narrow beaks is an adaptation. So, one trait isn't always an adaptation. It depends on the environment. DNA tests of the different finches from the Galapagos shows that they are all related to each other. A long time ago, one species did arrive at the islands and spread out. Once they were on different islands, differences in the available food leads to different shapes of beaks being helpful. Some of those. Small differences in shapes of beak lead to some individuals doing a little bit better and others starving just because of the beak shape. Over time, this has led to larger and larger beaks on certain islands and narrower and narrower beaks on other islands. This isn't hypothetical anymore. Scientists have observed evolution happening in lizards, moths, and more. Since 1988, Dr. Richard Lenski 
has been studying the evolution of E. coli bacteria from a single strain. With over 50,000 generations of bacteria, he's seen them change. One group evolved the ability to use a new type of nutrient. So, at its heart, natural selection is about competition for resources and certain variations, adaptations, becoming more common over time because the individuals with it have more offspring. That's the core of it, and it's not all that complex. There are a lot more things going on, but if you understand this much, then you know the essence of how evolution works. Thanks for watching. Riley Sayout.